What's going on guys, it's Alex here. So I wanted to give you a quick overview on the Western Mountaineering Antelope MF. Um, I got this bag yesterday. This is kind of a, a first look video and overview of what this thing uh, actually looks like in the real world. There's just not that much info out there on these bags, um, especially when we're talking about these uh, heavier duty uh, winter rated sleeping bags. Um, and there's just not that much info out there on winter sleeping bags to begin with. So. I have not slept in this bag and I just want to give you a brief overview of what this thing is and uh, maybe talk about exactly why I purchased this over all of the other um, sleeping bags or quilts out there on the market currently. Also, all the stuff that I say in this video is just my opinion based on my own personal experience with um, a lot of different quilt and bag manufacturers. Um, I've had bags and quilts from a lot of major manufacturers including and cottage vendors, including uh, Marmot, Feathered Friends, uh, Western Mountaineering, Z-Packs, uh, Enlightened Equipment, Jacks are better, and there's another one, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. So I have a decent amount of experience with down products, and I also have a decent amount of experience with how these down products are put together because I've also made my own uh, gear uh, down products as well. So I have a pretty good idea of how these things are put together and what's involved in making them. And, you know, to top that all off, I've done an awful lot of testing with sleeping bags and quilts, uh, whether it's in my own backyard doing testing at like, you know, minus six or minus seven degrees Fahrenheit, or it's out in the woods testing it on a mountaintop in minus four degrees Fahrenheit with like 40 mile an hour winds blasting you all night. So, that's kind of where my experience lies in using this stuff. I've also worked outside for the majority of my life and I rely on down products to keep me warm when I'm outside in a working environment. And I have a number of different down jackets and I've, I've seen a lot of down stuff, we'll just put it that way. Uh, but anyway, let me give you a quick overview of this bag and show you what it looks like in the real world. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. All right, so let's quickly talk about why I chose this bag over all the other bags currently on the market. First off, I think that uh, this bag in particular provides the absolute best warmth to weight ratio of any other bag quilt hybrid currently being sold at this moment in time right now on our journey around the sun. Now I know that sounds kind of like a bold statement, but based upon my research and again, based upon my experiences with other manufacturers bags, um, I think, especially now that seeing, now that I've seen this, I think that that is Definitely the case. So first off, let's quickly go over some of the real world specs on this bag. Um, I am five foot, 10 inches exactly without shoes on. I'm not one of those people who say he's six foot when in reality he's five nine. I'm 10 foot, uh, <laughs> I'm 10 foot, I'm five ten exactly without shoes on to the very top of my pointy head. This bag fit, uh, fits me perfectly. If I was six foot, I would probably look into getting the, uh, the, the long version of this bag. Um, 510 is about the max comfort zone that you're gonna have with this, especially if you're talking about possibly wearing some down booties inside here or uh, throwing some gear at the uh, foot end of the bag. My feet do not press against the bottom of the bag and my head does not press against the hood. Um, they're very close though. And again, if I was taller, I would definitely get the, uh, the longer version so that I don't compress any of the loft in the top and in the foot box, especially when you cinch down the hood. And that's extremely important because as you cinch down the hood, the bag actually gets slightly shorter. Um, you know, this has to come down like this and it kind of shortens the bag. So hopefully that's kind of a, a general sizing guide. And also I'm about 145 pounds. I know I look a lot heavier, um, but I'm 145 pounds uh, and there's plenty of room inside this bag for me. It is the largest sleeping bag that I've ever used. I have a, uh, currently I still have a Marmot Never Summer Zero Degree bag and that bag is much narrower than this bag. I was actually kind of surprised when um, I got in here because there was plenty of room. Um, and it's kind of weird because the thing's so lofty that it fills up every amount of dead airspace in here, but there's still plenty of wiggle room in here for me. I'm not the biggest person in the world. Um, I do have rather long, uh, long gangly arms and long gangly legs, but there's plenty of room for me to spread out in here and sleep on my side and everything like that without compressing the down and weird stuff happening. And also if I wanted to, I could put my giant feather friends down parka on inside this bag without compressing any of the down inside the bag or on my down parka, um, which would theoretically put me into like ridiculously low temperatures, uh, but we'll save that for a later video. 
there is so much loft to this bag, it's incredible. Um, and to tell you the truth, I've never had a bag that was, um, or a quilt or anything for that matter, that had this amount of loft in it other than Feathered Friends gear. Um, this is just a step above in terms of the down quality that they have and the amount of fill that they put in these things. Uh, weight wise, this comes in on my scale at two pounds, eight ounces. The spec weight on this on their website is two pounds, seven ounces. It comes in one ounce over what they say it is. To tell you the truth, I'm okay with that. My thoughts are that there's more down in here than what they say there is because this thing is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> look, look at, look at that. That's insane. Now the temperature rating on this bag is five degrees. Um, <laughs> for me, knowing what I know about how I sleep and other bags that I've used and temperatures uh, that I've used them in and looking at this bag and how it is built, which is a large portion of how warm a bag is, is how it's built, not necessarily how much loft it has, um, even though that's important too. Um, as, as you can see, this thing is lofty as crap. This is not a five degree bag for me. This is probably more like a minus 10, degra uh, 10 degree bag for me. Let me say that again. This is probably more like a minus 10 degree bag for me. And when I say that, I'm not talking about wearing a big puffy inside here. I'm talking about sleeping in uh, medium to lightweight base layers, bottom and top, and a fleece hat. This is probably a minus 10 bag for me based upon my experiences with other bags and how this one stacks up against those. One of the reasons why I chose this bag versus all the other ones, and one of the reasons why I think this bag is um, a better weight to warmth ratio is simply in the way that it's built. Um, if you look inside here, it's gonna be kind of hard to get at this camera angle, but the draft tubes on this thing are insane. And a large portion of why um, sleeping bags and quilts are warm is the ability to keep that heat inside of them. You don't want that heat escaping around your neck or around the foot box area or anywhere. So the, the more heat that you keep in the bag, the warmer it's gonna be. Um, this bag is gonna be extremely efficient because of this giant neck baffle. Of all the bags that I've had and all the quilts that I've had that have been rated to zero degrees, this one has by far the biggest, <laughs> the biggest baffling. It's almost kind of silly looking um, how, much, how much baffling is here. But when I'm using a bag in really cold temperatures, the area where I notice the air the most, guess what? It's right around the neck, whether it's in a quilt or a sleeping bag. It's also in a sleeping bag, it's also around the zipper. And let me bring you over here and show you this draft tube and how it works because it's kind of an ingenious design. So when we're talking about sleeping bag warmth, one area that cold air can get in is through the zipper. Uh, since sleeping bags are relatively easy to get in and out of, the zipper's along the side rather than underneath of you like in some quilt hybrids. I like the zipper on the side because it makes it really easy to get in and out of in cold conditions. Uh, the less fiddly something is when it's minus five degrees out, the better it works for me. Again, that's just me and my personal experiences. Now, sleeping bag manufacturers, in order to keep the cold air from getting in the bag, put draft tubes along the side of the bag. And again, Western Mountaineering has overdone itself in the draft tubes here. There's no doubt in my mind that this is gonna keep out the nastiest of drafts through the sleeping bag. Now, other sleeping bags that I've had have had okay draft tubes, but one of the problems that I've had with them is as I'm laying in the bag and kind of wiggling around, the draft tubes can kind of, and I, there's no way for me to show this to you, but the draft tubes kind of push up into the side of the bag and expose the zipper. Um, especially with your hands along your sides, you can kind of run your hands into the zipper and feel that cold air and you get cold spots. With this bag, because it has this stiffening tape for the zipper, which allows the zipper to basically zip up and down without snagging. It's the best zipper I've ever used, period, hands down. Um, this draft uh, stiffening tape here, draft tube stiffening tape here, actually, it does two purposes. It keeps it out of the zipper, but it also stiffens the draft tube and holds it in place. It's kind of an ingenious design and I can't believe how well it works. And I don't think that Western Mountaineering originally um, intended for that to be the case to, you know, to hold the draft tube in place, but I think it kind of worked out that way. And I think they, they probably stumbled onto this. I might be wrong. I can't imagine that someone was smart enough 
to add the stiffening tape to this to keep it out of the zipper and to keep the draft tube in place. It just kind of blows my mind, but it's there and it works beautifully. This draft tube, it's almost impossible to pull this draft tube up and out of the way inside the bag when the zipper's closed uh, with your arms, you know, just kind of naturally rolling around. Um, and this is hugely important when you're talking about really cold weather and sleeping bags. Uh, is to keep that draft tube in place. So again, I want to show you the uh, the neck baffle here. And this is another area where if we're talking about sleeping bag and quilt warmth, this right here is what you want. You want to keep as much of that warm air that your body is working. It's literally working to make that warm. You know, it's working to keep itself warm. You want to keep that inside the bag. And this is by far one of the best ways to do that is to keep it from escaping the bag in the first place. Again, in all of my experience sleeping in cold weather, the areas where cold air is a problem is around the neck and along the zipper, especially in sleeping bags. In quilts, it's a whole different story. We're not really gonna get into that now. Um, there's a lot of uh, worse things that can happen with quilts in cold weather, which is why I don't really recommend them uh, for someone who is uh, first getting into this or you know looking into sleeping in really cold weather. They just don't work as well um, they're not thermally, as thermally efficient as a, uh, a good quality sleeping bag is in cold weather. So a large draft collar around the neck area was absolutely essential for me when, uh, you know, looking to purchase a cold weather sleeping bag. Um, they even gone as far as to add stiffening tape here along the draft tube so the zipper doesn't snag that as it goes by and it works crazy good. Once the zipper's up, Velcro, um, the cinch cords work amazingly. I've had uh, bags in the past where these just don't work that well. The cinch cord along the draft tube, again, works amazingly. Um, it seals up all of the air that could possibly get into the bag. It's just a really well thought out, uh, really well designed. I can't stress enough how important that is when we're talking about sleeping in cold weather. So sorry, I'm kind of like twisted around here showing you this, but, and I'm gonna say this a lot. Check out the, the, the loft that's in this hood here. And this was another really important area for me was to have a really good functioning hood because, you know, sorry, I'm talking to you upside down. Let me just this. One of the things that I really dislike, I wish I could get the hood in here. There we go. About um, cold weather activities is wearing a hat. Um, after you've worn a hat for like three days at a time, it can start to feel really constrictive, at least for me. Um, one nice thing about having a really good hood system with a, uh, a sleeping bag is that you could take this off if you wanted to and sleep in a, a much lighter weight hat that's not as constricting and less warm. Um, you've got plenty of loft here to keep your head warm in five degrees or below conditions. And you don't have to worry about, um, you know, really bundling your head up if we're talking about comparing sleeping bags uh, to quilts. Because with a quilt, your head is basically just exposed from the neck up and you've got to take a really warm hood system um, in order for that quilt to be effective at that temperature range. And that's, again, it's a whole nother video. Um, with this, I can sleep in here with no hat and I have before. I've slept in uh, a couple other bags down to like minus four, minus five degrees without a hat on. I've just cinched this down and it's been much more comfortable for me in that regard. So having a really nice, really lofty hood was super important for me. So let's quickly talk about the elephant in room here, which is the loft of this bag. It is ridiculous. So the thing with this bag, and this is where we could kind of go down a rabbit hole of what's better and what's not better. Um, the thing with this bag is it does not use a hydrophobic down. It doesn't use a, a water resistant down in here. And I've had a lot of experience with high fill power, 950 plus uh, fill power downs with hydrophobic treatments and downs without. And I actually chose this bag because it does not have um, a water resistant treatment applied to the down. The reason that I chose that and the reason that I wanted that is because uh, and I'm not sure how to put this delicately, but I don't think that the uh, the the water resistant treatments in down really work all that well. And I actually think that they might have a negative effect to the higher fill powers. Um, if you compare a 950 down product from uh, another manufacturer with a hydrophobic treatment, I think I'm saying that right, with a water resistant treatment, um, it does not have the same lofting abilities that a 
untreated down does from Western Mountaineering or Feathered Friends. Um, and I don't know if that's simply because they get a higher quality down to begin with, or if that has to do with the, um, the water resistant treatment. The difference that I see all the time is the one with the water resistant treatment doesn't loft as well it doesn't loft as much and it also has a tendency for the down to kind of stick together and clump within the bag and i'm constantly uh, unclumping my water resistant down and uh, again i've seen this over a broad range of products and a broad range of manufacturers and i personally don't think that there's that much benefit to a, uh, a water resistant down in the real world as people say there is and there's just not that enough testing out there in controlled environments uh, to really give conclusive evidence that it does anything in the first place. Um, and I know somebody is going to see this and say, well, this, this, and this. I've probably seen all those tests too. I've done a lot, a lot of research and a lot of testing on this. So with that being said, the loft in this thing is absolutely positively ridiculous. It lost unlike any other piece of equipment that I've ever had excluding feathered friends. And when we're talking about this being a five degree bag, I think that that's way off, especially for me. I think I can easily push this to minus 10 with base layers and a fleece hat on. Look at the top portion of this bag and how lofty it is. So basically this portion from about here to here is the area between my rib cage, where am I? My, my lower rib cage and my neck. So from here to here, there's no airspace in here. There's nothing holding this up. It's just the, the, the down that's holding this uh, bag to the shape. I mean, check this out. <laughs> we have, it's gonna be kind of hard to see this on camera, but we've got one foot right here. And that's about even with this top baffle here at the very, at the very top. It's probably gonna look way off on camera, but that's significant. I mean, there's a foot of loft off the top of this bag. A lot of that has to do with the ridiculous draft collars that are in here, but because they're so big and this baffle here, I think is actually maybe slightly bigger in width than the other ones, but there's just so much down in here that you've got nearly a foot of double-sided loft in this. Um, and when I'm laying in here, and I'm not gonna show you, show you in this video because it's nasty outside. I don't wanna put it on the floor in here. I can take my hand and push it down to my chest and there's probably uh, seven to eight inches at least of down laying on top of me from my lower rib cage to my neck. I'm literally getting up on the uh, table here to show you guys because I wanna put it on the floor and it's dark outside. So I can't show you outside. <laughs> I mean, check out the amount of down that I have on top of me right here. It's just like from the top of the bag. I mean, that's probably at least seven inches when I'm laying in here. It's probably gonna be hard to, for that to come across on camera, but it's absolutely insane. I'm like immediately getting hot and it's like 45 degrees in here. So another thing I wanna mention real quick is that and this area up here, it's perfectly shaped for the human body to lay in. The problem that I have with a lot of the other sleeping bags and especially quilts is that they're not, um, what's the proper word? Anatomically shaped to the body. I hope that's the proper word. It's the first word that came to mind. They're not shaped the way a human is shaped. Um, a lot of the quilts and sleeping bags that I have experienced with in the past, especially the ultra light ones, are just a square. And that square doesn't conform to the shape of a human body very well. And what I found is that the tighter you pull the, the collar around your neck, the colder it gets. So you're kind of like a double-edged sword. If you leave it open, uh, it allows the quilt to loft nicely around your shoulders, but you get a bunch of uh, cold uh, air coming in your sleeping bag or warm air coming out, however you want to look at it. And then the second that you pull the cord shut around your neck to seal off all those drafts, you end up getting cold shoulders. Not in this bag. Um, that's because it is shaped. I mean, look at all the panels that they have. Panel here, panel here, panel here, and they're all different shapes. 
so that the bag is actually the shape of a human body and you don't get the cold shoulder when you cinch it down. If you cinch the hood down all the way, you still have like four and a half inches of loft on your shoulder. So you're not compressing the insulation in any way um, as you bundle up in this thing. So I hope I'm not forgetting anything here. Um, again, this is kind of just a first look and a brief overview of why I chose this uh, over any of the other bags on the market. And I don't know if I said this before, it depends if I'll edit it in or not. Um, but my budget for purchasing a winter bag was unlimited in that um, I wasn't basing my decision off of price. I wanted the best bag that I could get for my needs and that just happened to be this one um, from the research that I've done. There's a lot of other stuff on the market. Some of those things might work better for other people. Um, just kind of use this video as a general guide. Please don't make a decision simply based on this video. Do your own research and your own testing before you go and spend the money on this um, and purchase it from a place that has a good return policy. Um, hopefully I gave all of the uh, the important information here. Um, I think I said the weight, two pounds, eight ounces uh, for, the, uh, for the regular six foot version. Um, I'm 5'10", exactly 145 pounds on a good day. Um, I'm skinny, physically fit, and this bag for me will probably go down into the minus 10 degree range with base layers. Just based on my experience with a bunch of other bags uh, from different manufacturers and uh, loft and um, all that other good stuff. Um, one thing that I, I kind of want to leave you with, if you're looking, if you're relatively new and looking into purchasing a bag, don't purchase a bag simply on how much down is inside this bag. I think I said it before, but there's 26 ounces of down in here, but I think there's a little bit more um, simply based on the weight and other factors. Um, the amount of down and even the amount of loft, single-sided loft that a bag has is not the only indicator of how warm it is. Uh, the bag efficiency and the bag cut have a lot to do with how warm a bag is and how warm um, you will sleep in the bag depending on your sleeping style. So again, when you're comparing bags side by side, make sure that you're not just comparing the amount of down that's in the bag um, and the single-sided loft that's in a bag. Take a look at the entire package. How big are the draft tubes in the neck? How well and how much down is in the hood? How well is the hood designed? How much down is in the hood? Um, draft collars are a huge, huge uh, uh, deal for me. They're a deal maker or deal breaker. This had some of the biggest draft collars that I could see other than maybe Feather Friends. And to tell you the truth, the reason I purchased this bag over the Feather Friends bag was simply due to the uh, outside fabric. This came in a lighter, more breathable fabric than the Feather Friends. Uh, snow bunting did which is the equivalent bag um, down wise they have approximately the same amount of down that uh, bag's rated to zero this bag's rated to five um, i think they're generally speaking going to be the same warmth to each other that bag's a little bit more narrow cut so it might be a slight bit warmer but you know it's hard to compare um you know five degrees one way or another um, especially if you're considering uh bags by two really good uh, manufacturers that pay attention to the details like uh, the way a bag fits around you, draft collars, how the zippers work, how the draft collars uh, stay in place. All of that makes a huge difference in how warm a bag or a quilt is going to be for you. So just take all of these factors into consideration. If you want to see something else with this bag or something that I didn't show, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get that out. Um, again, I'm going to start loading uh, backpacking gear videos here. Um, and I'll probably just leave my trip videos on the other channel because I think more people appreciate them over there and I'll do the gear stuff over here just because it's fun to do. Two other real quick things as I'm putting this away. This is the storage sack that this comes with. It's made out of a relatively heavy duty material which I like. Some of the other uh, sleeping bags and quilts that I have come with a really super thin flimsy storage bag and uh, I'm always afraid of like just ripping through that in my closet. I'm not afraid of ripping through this. I think it's going to protect the bag a lot better. So very happy with this. It also comes with a stuff sack, which is relatively heavy duty. Um, it holds the bag barely. It's uh, relatively tough to get it in there, but it does fit. Um, I'm gonna replace that bag. I don't have it here. Maybe I'll throw in some B-roll um, with a Cuban fiber dry bag if I can find one big enough. Uh, I might have to make one, but yeah. It does come with a uh, storage sack and a compression sack. And that's what it looks like in the storage sack, which no one cares about. Boom.